We're going to look at a nonfiction book and look for nonfiction text features. Okay, so we could start on the cover, and you can see that's the title. And this isn't really a text feature, but it gives us the author there. This page is the table of contents. That is a very important page that helps you find the big sections in the book. If you are doing a report on the Brothers Grimm and you want to know about when they published the tales, and that's really all you're looking for, you don't have to read the entire book. You can look for a section that will tell you that information, and then you look at the page number, and then you can go directly to that page. So if that's the only information you need, you can go right to page 13, and this will tell you about when they published it. If you'll notice, this text is different than this text, okay? And you'll see, as you go through, there are several of these in the book. These are called headings, and headings help you to find the different sections in the book, and it's also a great way to preview your text before you read it. This helps also in a textbook. So if you didn't have the table of contents, like in a textbook you wouldn't have the table of contents to rely on, you could go through and see kind of what is going to be in the book just by looking at the headings. Introduction, Growing Up Grim, so obviously that's a part about when they were younger. This is how they were educated, school and university. New Directions, so I'm assuming that that would be about after school, what did they do, um, what did they experiment with as far as like their career. Okay, there's no headings on this page. Difficult times, that tells us that they didn't have an easy life. And then they started writing the tales and getting the ideas. And they published it. And they were working and living together and maybe what that was like. And then we get to the end of the book. So the headings can help a lot. And also, if you didn't have the table of contents and you wanted to tell about their young age, you could look at the headings to find the section of the book you want. Okay, another thing is, see how this text looks different than this text. This is a caption, and a caption is the description of a picture or sometimes a chart or a graph or something, okay? A poet in the Middle Ages tells a heroic legend to a group of eager listeners. And that's what is happening in the picture. Let's look for another couple of uh, captions. Fairy tales often include magical creatures. That's a caption for this picture right here. Here's a caption for this map. Not every map has a caption, but this one happens to. So I think you have the idea of what captions do. Okay. So if you were reading this, this book for information, you might want to read the text part. Now, why is this in like a yellow box and it's separate from all of this if you look at it? This is called a text box, or sometimes it's called a sidebar. And what that means is it's extra information that helps you understand the rest of the main text. The Brothers Grimm wrote about fairies. The fairies were important in their stories. So here are here's some information about fairies. Let's see if we can find any more text boxes or sidebars. I would say that that was kind of a sidebar because it's talking specifically about Germany, which is where they grew up, right? 
So this gives us a little more information on the map and see how each book is different, but this book happens to take the text box or the sidebar in with a yellow background and different books do different things, like I said. Here's another one. There's another one. You understand what a text box is. All right, let's keep going through the text. We talked about a map. A map will tell us where some of the events in the story are taking place. And yes, we see this map, and we can see that Germany is near Poland and Czechoslovakia and Belgium and the Netherlands and France. But where is that in the world? So this part of the map is very helpful. This is called an inset. And this box in here represents this box right here. But it puts it on the globe to see where in the world this is. So this is showing us where this is in the grand scheme of the world. So that's very helpful. Okay, another caption. This is a photograph. It's taken with a camera. Here's a drawing of the, what the two men looked like. Back then they didn't have cameras. This was obviously taken in modern times, but they all they had were artists that would be able to draw them or paint them. But that is an illustration. Okay, so the photograph is taken with a camera and an illustration is either painted or uh, drawn. Okay, so we've got some more headings. We've got that text box that we talked about. Here's another illustration. Okay, let's look at this. This is called a timeline, and this is when Jacob was born in 1785, and his brother Wilhelm was born in 1786. Okay, so that's the beginning of their lives. As you go down, it talks about different life events for them, the important parts of their life. And you can see on the timeline just when all of these things happen. It gives you the dates. So a timeline is pretty easy to spot because it's usually in a line. Sometimes it's a horizontal line. But it has years or dates or something special like that. So this is really important. Timelines. These are more illustrations. Now, you might have noticed as we went through here, there are some words in here that are highlighted. That would be called text types. Text types are different in each book. This one happens to highlight them. Sometimes they're in a darker print, which is called bold. And I think back at the beginning, yes, right here. This text looks a little bit different than the rest. It's fancier. It's kind of leaning to the right a little bit. That is called italics. And that's another type of text. Okay, sometimes you'll see underlined text. And that's another kind. So highlighted, bolded, italics, and underlined are all different types of text. Not every type of text feature is found in each book. So I want to point out one more thing. See how there are these dots right here? And that's kind of a way of listing things. And these are called bullets. When you look at a list of some sort, it will either be represented by bullets, which really say that one isn't more important than the other, or it might mean that one doesn't happen before the other. But if we have, instead of the bullets, we may have numbers, one, two, three, four, etc., And that might show a process that's happening or something else that's in chronological consecutive order or something you have like a process that you have to follow. I guess you would call that another type another type of text. Okay? And I think that's all we have for this book.
In this book, there are a few different text features that I wanted to point out, and maybe we can look at some of the ones that are similar to the other book. Table of Contents. And this book has chapters. They've actually named the chapters. There's a photograph, another photograph, a caption. Here are some highlighted text, which is a type of text. Here is a sidebar with, I think it's a photograph, but it's giving us information about one of the people in the story. Okay, obviously a map, which is helping you figure out where some of these events happened. Here's another timeline. This one looks a little bit different than the first one, but it's still a timeline. Uh, let's see, a heading. Oh, wait a second. Let's look at this a little bit more closely. I guess that is the chapter heading. Because look how, see how this is different than this text right here? This is the name of the chapter. So I would call that the chapter title. And then that would be a heading because it's, and you can tell because it's a different color and it's a little bit smaller than the chapter title. Okay. Those words are a little bit bigger than these. Headings. All right, this one is a diagram. And see how there's arrows in here? The diagram shows how something happens. This one does. It's showing a process. So this tells us how glacier ice forms. So it falls as snow, and then it turns into granular snow, and then fern, I don't know what that word means, but maybe it breaks apart, or it clumps together, and then that forms into glacier ice. Okay, so it goes in a process. So diagrams are very helpful if you can um, look at the arrows and the labels that are on them. Here is another diagram. This diagram is also called a cutaway because it's almost as if they cut part of the earth out here and here, you can see. So you can see different layers underneath. If it was just a picture from above, you would see this, but you wouldn't see this. So a cutaway is something interesting. You can see what's inside. We haven't really studied that one yet. This is a diagram because each of the parts it has a label. Usually there's a line or an arrow, and then the labels are out here. And this one's nice because these are very specific words having to do with geography, landforms, but most people don't know those. We know what a kettle is, but a landform called a kettle is different than tea kettle that we have on our stove, right? And it gives the definitions of all of those. So that's very helpful so you understand what's happening in this. And this last part was not in the last book. It's called an index. And an index is helpful. A lot of people think that it's very similar to a table of contents. But if you look at the table of contents, that only tells you the major parts, the chapters or the major sections. But your index tells details. So if you were doing a report on just on glaciers, not necessarily on Louise Arner Boyd, if you needed information, you could look up glaciers here. Here's information specifically about glaciers. And you can tell it's on page 3, 6, 7, 9, 13, and 17. So you don't have to search the whole book. This helps out a lot when you're looking for information. So an index is a very helpful text feature. In this last book, I want to point out two other text features that are pretty important. 
This is called a table. They've organized information in this book to help us compare things. This column is all about black bears. This one is about brown bears, and this one is about polar bears, because that is what the book is about. And the rows tell us about the scientific name for each of them, how tall they are, how, how long their bodies are, their weights, and where they live, and what they eat. That is something that helps us just see information instead of having to read it in the text we can quickly get information. Like if we're just looking for the weight of the bear, we could look into this column. And we don't have to use the whole table, but something like that might be useful. It's in the back of the book, there is something called a glossary. A glossary is kind of like a mini dictionary that has to do with the important words that you might have seen throughout the book. It is in alphabetical order, so it's easy to find the words. If you find a word that you um, come across and you're not sure, flip to the back, see if there's a glossary, and see if you can find the definition in it. I mentioned that the last book was going to be our last book, but I found some other uh, examples that I wanted to show you. Um, you might see charts and graphs. And charts and graphs are another way to show information. It compares how many, this one happens to compare how many billions of people. So you have to look at these labels on the side, okay? Because it looks like there's only one, two, three, four people, but it's one billion, two billion. So these are billions of people. And then this, and it compares it to the years. Look at, how, over time, look how quickly the population in the world has increased. It was pretty steady for a while, and then it started going up, and then it went up dramatically, very quickly, in just a short amount of time. And charts and graphs are interesting to look at because it makes you think, why was the population of the world so flat for so long and why did it start to go up and why did it go up so quickly? That's something that charts and graphs help you to see. This is called a pie chart or a pie graph. This book happens to call them pie graphs. But what it does is it shows you percentages or fractions of the whole. This has to do with the Canadian economy. And so in 1951, 51% of the money that came into Canada had to do with services. And agriculture was smaller. Manufacturing was about half of what services were. And then if you look in 2005, this is comparing those two years, and you can see that services have grown, that agriculture, the green, has shrunk dramatically, and it also shows you that other sources of the economy have grown also. One more graph I want to show you is called a bar graph. This is a bar graph. Sometimes the bars go across horizontally like this, and sometimes they go vertically. And it just depends on the way that the author wanted to create it. But this compares the countries with the percent of power that they generate. Okay, this is the nuclear energy generation. It's very important, like I said, to look at both of the scales and the title when you're reading a graph.